Welcome to the Code Zone. I'm Kehlani and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. In this series, we're going to learn everything you need to know about getting started with coding in Scratch. Scratch is a fun and accessible platform that allows you to build games, animations, and interactive stories without needing to write complex code. In this season, you'll learn how to make all those things and more happen by coding along with me. Let's go! Before we get to coding, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Let's log in to Scratch. Go to scratch.mit.edu. Once you've landed on the page, you'll see options at the top to create and explore. If you're super new to Scratch or just looking for a little refresher, you should definitely check out this video from season one of Code Along. I go over all the important Scratch basics. Check it out. Now let's create a new project. You can do this by clicking on File, then New. Today we're coding a project all about pets. I have the cutest puppy in the world. Her name is Cloud. Do you have a pet? What about a virtual pet? No, didn't think so. A virtual pet is the perfect way to have an animal that's cute and fluffy. Or scaly if you make it into a snake. My favorite thing to do with my puppy Cloud is play fetch. Today, I'm gonna to create an interactive game in Scratch where my virtual puppy plays fetch too. To make our virtual pet game, we'll need a puppy sprite, a ball sprite, and a stage. That's the background. Oh. Whoops, I guess fetch isn't an inside game. Go to the bottom right screen and click on the backdrop icon. You'll see lots of backdrops to choose from. I'm going to go to the outdoor section and pick playing field. Next, I need a puppy sprite and a ball sprite. You can choose any dog and ball images from the Scratch library or upload your own. Start by deleting the cat sprite. To do that, click the trash can above the sprite in the sprite pane. Sorry, Scratch Cat. To choose your new sprite, click on the cat icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. Click on animals and choose your virtual pet. I'm picking this cute black puppy. Now, go back to the sprite library and choose a ball. Drag the puppy to the left side of the stage and the ball to the right. Now we can start programming our virtual pet to turn around in excitement and fetch the ball. Go to the events tab and drag one green flag click to the coding area. Let's add a repeat loop from the control tab and change 10 to 8. The control tab helps us control the actions of our sprites. It has different blocks that can repeat or start and stop actions based on certain conditions. Next, add a sound block inside the loop and change the sound to dog 2. Add a wait 1 seconds block to make the puppy turn around. Add a next costume block to switch to the next image of the puppy. Costume? That might sound like my puppy is wearing an outfit. But no, most sprites come with more than one position of itself known as costumes. You can change the costumes to make the actions look more dynamic. Now somebody get this off me. <laughs> Under the loop, use the say hello for two seconds block and change hello to let's play. Click on the green flag above the stage and see how excited the puppy is to play. <laughs> Mm, that's a little too slow for her to seem excited. I'm going to change the one second inside the wait block to 0.5 seconds, then click the green flag again. Now she looks super excited. Now let's make our puppy move towards the ball. When you click on the puppy, it'll wait for a second, then move towards the ball. This makes it look like the owner is throwing a ball to a place on the field and the puppy is running to the right of the screen to fetch it. Let me show you this in code. When I click the puppy, I want it to wait for one second, then show where the ball landed. For this, we can use broadcast messages. When the puppy reaches the ball, it'll send a show ball message to the ball sprite. Click new message and type in show ball. Then, Wait one second for the puppy to figure out where the ball landed because after all it is a puppy, so she's still learning. Adding a switch costume block will show the direction the puppy is moving in. She's going from left to right, so we can change the costume of the puppy to puppy right. 
After reaching the ball, the puppy will wait, then turn around and run back to its original position using the glide box for movement. Add the X and Y coordinates of the ball to the glide blocks. Let's test out the puppy running to get the ball. We're halfway there. Now the puppy has to return with the ball. Okay, our puppy has the ball in her mouth and she's returning for another round, but the ball is still showing on the screen. Let's add another broadcast block and create a new message to hide the ball. After the ball disappears, the puppy should wait another second, then turn back around and run to me. Let's add another switch costume block and change the costume to puppy left. Oh no, there isn't a puppy left costume. That's okay, we can create one. Click on the puppy, then go to the costume tab. Select the puppy right costume, right click on it, and then click duplicate. Change the name of the costume to puppy left. Next, click on the flip horizontal button and you will see the image flip to the left. Go back to the coding area, then select puppy left from the drop down menu. Okay, we are so close. Earlier, we added messages from the broadcast blocks to hide and show the ball. Click on the ball, then drag and drop to when I receive message blocks into the coding area. Change one message to show ball then drag a show block below it. Next, change the message for the second block to hide ball, then drag a hide block below it. This simulates the puppy picking up and dropping off the ball. Let's test our game. Ready? Click the green flag and then click on the puppy. And there you have it. We're playing fetch with our very own virtual puppy. What virtual pet do you make? You can even add more features like different sounds, increasing your pet's speed, or adding more animations. Experiment with different ideas to make your game as unique as you are. Wow, we learned so many things in this video. Let's review. To create a movement in Scratch, start by using the event blocks to determine when your actions begin or when the characters get activated. Use motion blocks to animate your sprites and make them move. Use control blocks to help you sequence events, add pauses, or introduce repetition. Use looks blocks to change the appearance of sprites, allowing change of costumes or alter the backdrop, enriching the visual narrative of your story. Whew, great work. Don't forget to save your project so you can share it with friends or the Scratch community. To save the project, click File in the top left corner, then select Save Now. Once your project is saved, let's share it with the Scratch community. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give your project a descriptive title, then click the share button to the right of the title. Once we've saved and shared our project, let's view the project page to add the instructions, notes, and credit sections. In the instructions section, I'll add directions to tell the user how to play this interactive game. In the credits section, I want to thank anyone who helped me create this project and give credit to any sources I used. Check out the link below to view the code for today's project. Remix it and have fun making it yours. See you next time coders. It was awesome to have you back in the code zone.